1111 seems to be coming with a punch this year with the Mercury transit across the sun, a potentially significant event. I'm going to be discussing it for the first time today on this channel. Some interesting facts that I've gathered, some interesting dates to consider. Uh, and this is a time of great transition. Now, we've been talking about this shift of cycles out of source cycle 24 into 25. And they're already seeing signs from recent sunspots like AR 2750 of a new magnetic polarity. So it's a uh, conjunction of events, a term I've already used to define a number of other things that are coming together. World and upheaval, civil unrest, deep sore minimum. But what we're looking at with this Mercury in transit during a, uh, a full moon in Taurus is also very, very interesting. So let's get into some of the key areas to share. Okay, so there's a couple of dates that I'm going to mention. These are Mercury transits of the past. Some of them took place before we were born. What was going on on the planet? For those of us that were alive, what was going on in our own personal lives? Okay, so these are dates of Mercury transits. November 2nd, 1960. May 9th, 1970. November 10th, 1973. November 13th, 1986. November 6th, 1993. November 15th, 1999. May 7th, 2003. November 8th, 2006. May 9th, 2016. 11-11-2019. That's coming up tomorrow. Okay, so when I came across that information, a couple dates stood out to me where something significant was taking place. And it could also be like that period. Some say, you know, the weeks before and after. A lot of us have been going through these personal transformations as well on some level. And some of them are more internal. They're not necessarily on the outer. For some people, it is on the outer or in the outer world or their outer world or a bit of both. Okay. What I notice is November 1993. Okay, I was 13 years old. Okay, I remember other changes in my life that were similar. Here's November 1999. Here's another date here. Also, 1986 is mentioned. I'm not sure what exactly was going on, but I do feel that there was something significant about uh, the years 1986 and 1987 from a cosmic spiritual perspective. Um, I sensed even then something different taking place energetically. So thinking back on 1987, 1986, 85, like a lot of people of my generation, there's something about those years. So that's very interesting. So what I'm going to do now is read some of the additional notes and I'll give some of my own perspectives. Central theme is a time of great change. High energy time. It's not just the solar flares. The power elite, in some cases, manufacture world events to get their way and direct society. Deceive. We should not be falling for those deceptions, right? We should be in the driver's seat of our own personal consciousness shift on the individual level, regardless of where the masses go. This is the time for the inner spiritual work. Okay. So we're not going to see another Mercury transit across the sun until 2032. And then another 2039. So there's a certain patterning to this. Now, another researcher talked about the false light and dark forces attempting to hijack the galactic center alignment of November 19th, Jupiter, 
and the galactic center. And so coming across other perspectives that are discussing the reality of the powers that be or others or people in general attempting to deceive during certain events in which people should be moving forward, the need to see beyond that. So there could be certain things that are happening in the uh, international media at that time that can be distracting to an inner spiritual consciousness shift for the positive. Okay, so November 20th to December 12th uh, has been noted to be a period of uh, moving forward from a lot of what we're going through right now and the decisions being made right now. And I do agree with a lot of the things that I heard from some of these um, astrologers, even if some of them may put out information that doesn't vibe with us. And there are certain channels that may focus a great deal on relationships or a great deal on other things and factors, whereas synchronicity can lead some of us to finding other researchers that are interpreting things a more um, a way that's more suitable for us and where we're at. Maybe there is a reason why you're here. You may not agree with everything that's shared or presented. You don't have to. But what my role is, is to share ideas and information uh, that need to be shared. And some of them are not widely known, these concepts that I get into. These are concepts that in some cases are not easy for me to uh, describe to you one-on-one -on -one in a video like this. It's not necessarily uh, easier to do it in an interview setting, right, where there are... Um, a number of different things to explain when getting into certain complex topics that are unfamiliar to certain people, right? And I have a long way to go before I'm at that level of being able to reach the world with these ideas. But I do believe that people would be more empowered if they learn how to apply some of these concepts to take them back their own life and take them back their own mind and take them back their own spirit from the dark grid of this world. From being led into deception, into deception. So the transits take something away and leave something as well. So karma comes up a lot in the analysis of this time that we're in and it being a different experience across the board. For the people of the earth. We may experience more communication. Including with self. Past. And how it motivates us. This individual notes. The sun. Life force. Motivation. Desire. He sees those things. As derivatives of the sun. The mercury and Scorpio. Eclipse of the sun as our own needs to understand something that can cover up our own life force. So it's representing something as our own need to understand something that covers up our own life force and what we truly need. It's very important to rise above the negative emotions of the past and not be weighed down by something that happened years and years ago. A time to let go and release. So that's interesting. This is a period in which there, there's a lot of people discussing concepts such as healing. So you may see like uh, patterns. You know, I talk about this pattern recognition. Patterns where different people with maybe different ideologies and different understandings and different politics, for whatever reason, vibing to maybe a similar spiritual understanding that unifies them all. I mean, do you guys realize how different the audience is of this channel, for example? Oh, incredibly. And I can choose to say, get into certain topics and, you know, they might perceive to be very, very unpopular, you know, 
But what's the best thing to be doing in this day and age? Engaging in idle gossip? Engaging in he said, she said? Engaging in Inside Edition tonight? <laughs> Who looks the coolest and the sharpest with the coolest suit and tie? In the... And it's, it's really not even about a suit and tie. It's really about being fashionable to the masses, right? And we're not just talking about clothing. We're not just talking about attire. And um, it's like there's so much I want to say as I go through this. Some of us that are involved in speaking truth need to keep working on breaking away from the masses and speaking our truth, regardless of how unpopular it may seem to be in today's day and age. I'm often talking about future generations. Well, then I'm also talking about future timelines and us being energetically connected to those future timelines and our actions today having meaning and purpose, even if we don't know all the reasons why. And let me tell you something else before I continue. Those dates I read, some of those dates and periods I've been thinking about. Yeah. Only last night did I read that. So I'm thinking in my mind, we may be tapping into certain timelines and things that we've been to, been through in the past, certain dates, certain specific experiences down to a T, down to a T. Something I have actually been through in 1999 comes up. And as I write in my autobiography, little by little, you know, just a little at a time. I'm not in any hurry. But chronicling these different lifetimes within my lifetimes, I'll be thinking more about certain events during certain times. And now today, this morning, I realize that this transit energy of Mercury may be literally an energetic cord to this past event. Meaning these are very critical times for self-healing and working through whatever happened or is happening, right? As we're about to experience whatever we will be feeling tomorrow morning as it will be a early morning event. On 11 11 2019. So, going back to some of these notes, I don't want to rush through this video. Some of these concepts are new to me. Even in my own investigations into the sun and its influence into our life, on that note alone, right? That is a huge subject. So I may start for a few years looking at a very specific area of research that other people may have deemed less significant than that which they're currently looking at. So we have differences of perspective, differences of opinion, and that's beautiful. There's a reason why we're going to be looking at the sun and having a different perspective and a different sense and a different opinion on our spiritual connection to it, or some would say um, the opposite. No spiritual connection to the sun. Kind of like there's politics, like, like a subject out there, you know, pick a subject, pick an issue. There's maybe one position and another. So there very much is that type of... Um, duality that can be measured here on earth. Those that are open to the idea that we are affected by some of these celestial changes and factors, um, people that do believe that we are a part of nature in that sense, deeply connected to nature in that sense. And there's going to be another perspective that is absolutely against that. And there may be certain times I'm going way, way off now. I want to reel it back. There may be certain times in the earth timeline where it's more controversial than others to simply speak your mind about spiritual matters for reasons the humans on the ground may not understand. 
but looked at from another perspective, a big perspective, maybe the picture would be more clear why there's interference regarding simple commentary on spiritual affairs. These are things to think about. Journal about, continue to move forward in your intellectual and your spiritual progress, however it manifests. Okay, it is important to rise above the negative emotions of the past, to not be weighed down, a time to let go, a time to release. How many of us here on earth even know what that even means anymore? With all this traumatizing news and psychological warfare and things of that nature. I'm going to keep it real, folks. I'm going to talk about these changes in the cosmos and then go, whoa, look at our world right now. How do we make sense out of this? Now, the eclipse takes something away and gives something back. This is the spiritual nature or context of an eclipse. Potent opportunity for closure. True closure is possible. To understand where the life force went. So I'm, I'm going to pause here in between my notes because some of them are different thoughts. To understand where the life force went. To understand... How many of you have been contemplating your life lately more, more than normal? You know, just maybe certain things. How many of you have been doing it all the time and wondering why? <laughs> what does it all mean? <laughs> why am I thinking about these things? You know, I think some of these things that we're talking about today lead us to some potential answers. So to understand where the life force went, uh, continuing, the transit offers a solution to the equations, to the questions. So it's the idea of answers coming. You know, so I listened to one particular podcast that was 25 minutes on this subject, listened to it multiple times, thought about it for multiple hours, incorporating it into what we've been talking about this entire time on this channel and other things. I've been saying for years about asking questions to things which don't have immediate answers because their, their time may not be here yet. Their transit may not be here yet. These transits, taking something away, it was just weeks ago that I was hypothesizing with you for the very first time the idea of these asteroids taking something away or dropping something off. That could be perceivably positive or negative, maybe outside our perception, but something's changed, hasn't it? And people are asking themselves, some people are even looking up and going, what's going on with the Milky Way? It looks brighter. What's going on, dude? Then some might notice the change in the color from the sun, as we may also see other unknown effects subtly from the Earth's magnetic field's change. Other colors could start to appear and disappear. Lo and behold, articles like that are appearing <laughs> and disappearing down the memory hole if it's on social media. Now it appears, now it's gone. There it is, now it's not. On to something else, distraction, politics, manufactured event, react. So if the, if the people could understand these formulas and understand that the powers that be have something figured out about consciousness, that light bulb can go off above their head. And people could actually take their power back from years and years of believing a lie when they begin to deprogram and move on from those behaviors, those thoughts that no longer serve them. I vibe to that. That understanding of, and certain points are going to come where that sense is going to be really, really strong. And we may not know why that sense is really, really strong about this quickening of change and a need to raise our vibration, our frequency, our consciousness, our behavior, our thoughts, our focus, our responsibility. And a step back from blaming the entire world for why our life is the way that it is. 
So hearing even my own thoughts mentioned by some of these other people on YouTube has been a great deal of confirmation this morning. This video wasn't even planned two days ago that we would discuss specifically the Mercury transit. So I am convinced that we are in some sort of a window of interesting energy. A time to reflect on the people and things of the past that we should evolve beyond. A higher valuation of the personal life force is rewarded by the universe. A higher valuation of the personal life force is rewarded by the universe. And so this would also relate to changing our thoughts about a great number of things, as well as our actions, lifestyles. This energy leads to transformation. Previous coping mechanisms to deal with problems may block our life force. The root of this transit deals with the awareness of what blocks our inner solar life force. Mercury is about communication, conscious reflection, understanding. As it covers the sun, it is an interesting or it is about what is covering our progress. What is covering our progress? That becoming illuminated as Mercury covers the sun. It's a time for self-empowerment, not blaming others for where we are at. There's a couple of videos that I watched, but one guy in particular was like hitting the nail on the head. It's an important time to work on one's um, mental health as suicide may continue to show signs in the population, he adds, as we also see in the news. We also see behaviors, I believe, indicative of people um, trying to get people to do that. Like we read about stuff happening in schools. Kids being singled out and bullied to death, basically. This is becoming like a regular headline. It's because that behavior is stemming from something else that's taking place in the cosmos. Uh, the archonic consciousness in this reality. It's showing itself in our society. Back away from communication with people that aren't well. It's important to not deny self-growth for the consumption of others. People can tend to devour emotionally right now. Energy vampires. Know who is prone to this. Okay, so there's a lot of information shared along those lines and others. As this is active especially around the period of November 11th, there may be clarity around where you need to go, what you need to do, what the rest of your year looks like. This Scorpio influence injection of energy is the acceptance that can be there. Even if things aren't pretty, that there's a clear picture being painted. I'm actually quoting what he's saying directly because I believe that it holds strong significance and that we can psychoanalyze that quote. But I think that it directly relates to what we've been getting at here. We're getting confirmation. We're onto something here. We are in a massive shift of something and we need to be responsible for how we respond to it because others, their consciousness shift almost seems manufactured and directed from on high or on low. So there's a clear picture being painted once more about what has led us into a gray-toned, toxic, nasty experience, end quote. Despite Mercury in retrograde, this is a great transit on the uh, mundane collective level because it aligns your thinking mind with your vitality, with your soul's wants and your soul's desires so we can understand how to move forward in our careers, how to be more prepared, how to be more happy. We can find the answers in this time. I'll say that part again. We can find the answers in this time. So maybe that's a time of uh, researching a new project, adding some additional commentary to this, a new book, a new self-help course. They even mentioned martial arts. I thought that was interesting. 
or progressing on it. So there, there may be something to the cosmos to where people that have a certain craft or uh, art or hobby to where they advance at a higher level because of that. I, I have attributed geomagnetic storms and solar maximum to an increase in the co combat sports in general. Not necessarily fighting the streets, but professional sports, um, MMA, things of that nature seem to be more popular when the sun is more active because of the way that I believe that it boosts testosterone in the human body. And I think that the advancement of studies on the solar influence over human society should include specifically studies along those lines. They have done studies on the solar influence um, over human behavior in the sense that they have discovered that uh, more people in certain regions committed more suicides. So there's some studies out of Russia, for example, uh, certain towns, specific towns, like Oleg Shumilov, who was quoted in New Scientist, specific things like that. So those are subtle things that can be very influential, right? But most of society could be entirely like unaware of this. And if more people were aware of these subtle influences over society, they could be more prepared to deal with the unpredictable. That would include people that act out. So think about people that work with the public. Think about um, every field that works directly with the public on a daily basis, whether they like it or not. Uh, not just the people at the grocery store, but services, government services, people that respond to uh, emergencies and outbreaks, uh, people that um, deal with things of that nature, social services, uh, people that may deal with uh, people that are in a mental health crisis. People that work with the public would be best prepared for doing that in today's day and age by learning about these things. Because it's not just the full moon. But on that note, because many people in law enforcement do know about the full moon influence over crime. What about when there's a full moon combined with certain transits? So we could see, for example, potentially, I'm going to get back to my notes here, but in, in this free flow, we could see in the next couple of days some crazy crime manifesting in and around this transit and or geopolitical actions or threats or saber rattles, right? We can also potentially see, sense, and experience spiritual breakthroughs, releases. So I, I think that this is a very important conversation to have, whether we're talking about the changes in the sun or the effects of transits or the effects of full moons, whatever the high energy event is, to be responsible for our own evolution moving forward, right? And to, in no way, shape, or form, unconsciously respond to the changes in the energy by just emotionally reacting to someone or something. Or even allowing ourselves to fall prey to the mind hijack, where some people during some high energy times may not behave in the most spiritual. Instead, they may look for someone to bully. And we live now where that is a trending topic as that consciousness becomes more predominant in mainstream society. That's coming from an archonic place. Which gets way more interesting when we realize that there is a connection between periods in which archonic influence seems to wane and wax in the way that the influence of the moon or the brightness of the moon wanes and waxes in the days up in the days there could be things that cause the influence of the archons or other entities or demons to wane and wax so i think that there is a purpose in studying the position of the stars and the behavior of the humans down on the ground and looking at a timeline of thousands of years and coming to a deeper realization behind this path of humankind. Now the body, 
may respond to fear or with fear to what this transit may be uh, bringing. So like an automatic thing. And that is important information to know as well. So some people may feel a certain way emotionally. And if you realize that it can be subtly influenced by certain factors, <clears throat> you can bring yourself back to center and ground. If someone is unaware that their fear, anxiety, anger, other things, if they don't know what may be influencing those things, then the challenge there is them overcoming the unfortunate reality of acting on some of those urges or influences. And so the idea is to become more powerful than the reactive mind, than the reactive um, prototype personality even that may be programmed with certain things via propaganda, right? So we have a group mind, for example, hive mind that has been programmed to a certain degree, certain events in the cosmos that take place that bring a rise of certain emotions, some dormant, some not, some issues resolved, many not. How unpredictable is it really? The answer is it is predictable that certain events that can't be manufactured and certain propaganda that can be catapulted to the masses can influence behavior and action. So as we look at the next decade of these interesting alignments of these solar eclipses, the power elite and the people that are engineering these wars, engineering many things, including many things that many people think that they're not controlling, including the outcomes of elections. Of course, they control the outcomes of each of these elections for a reason. It's a part of the in-game outcome as they play the stars and the sun against us. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up and be in our power. And to do that, we need to speak our truth. One of the things that was said by one of the researchers was the significance of speaking our truth, even if it's a Mercury retrograde. Another said, even though it's a Mercury retrograde, this is the ideal time to be making important decisions rather than to be avoiding the um, decision-making process over certain things. So the changes that we're going through, the way that it feels, can feel like a bucket of cold water being dumped on our head, which is not necessarily a very fun experience. So being forearmed with this knowledge about the sun and these other things can help someone make a better decision. Now, the woman that gave the dates regarding the past Mercury transits. Because that's how I found out about it. She said she's been looking forward to this period all year long. This period of 11-11-2019 all year long wasn't on my radar. Scorpio is in a particular house astrologically for each person and that is a sign how it will affect someone. Astro.com is a place to determine where your house is. Uh, full moon in Taurus, one day after the transit, truth comes from the heart within. Doors open when you speak your truth. Backlash energy happens regardless. It's a time to release all contracts, including ancestral karma. Now, there was a particular focus on this. Okay, so the releasing of ancestral karma. Many people also are distancing themselves from family for their own spiritual growth. I'm not here giving advice. I'm here stating some of the patterns that are being seen. In the later month, the decisions made now will be seen. Mercury retrograde is a powerful time for some decisions. 
November 19th features Jupiter in the galactic center. I mentioned some of this, going over it again. And that brings us into alignment with whatever path that we chose during this time. Now, side note, and this person that said this, you know, said they're not political. They don't have a dog in this race. It's about looking at Trump's um, chart and next week. Trump's actions will have a greater impact for better or for worse during this time of November 19th because of his chart. Okay, so this is not like like a, a you know a blanket stamp good or bad this is like something's coming up around November 19th potentially from Trump that will have a greater impact than normal also warnings of the light slash false light working in and around this period Jupiter amplifies everything that's there it allows for growth when confronting illusions within confronting November uh, 23rd Venus on galactic center manifestation prime time uh, so it's the ultimate time to walk out on the stage of life the new path of our choosing <clears throat> so for like physically in the same place it's about taking new paths within no many illusions are affecting the planet that, to the best of our ability, most are unaware. Guides and spirit have different agendas. Some direct into conflict and war. The more we set the intention of seeing through the eyes of the heart, the more you will be able to benefit from what your greatest part of growth is. Compassion does not require being co-opted. That is more sacrificial BS. Anything that requires you to be anything less than you are is old karmic BS. Meanwhile, another YouTuber talks about 80 to 85% getting back positive karma while others uh, may be receiving some more challenging experiences. So there's a constant theme of karmic return with most of these uh, videos discussing this era that we're in. She says the week ahead is one for the history books. It's a period to learn our lessons and to stop making the same mistakes. So with that, I think I'm going to bring this video to a close. I want to thank the positive comments that are out there. I want to thank Mercury Rising for your positive comments as well as your contribution to the topic. Judith, and uh, I appreciated that discussion across the sea on night flight a lot of interesting uh interviews on her youtube channel i appreciate those of you that are out there i appreciate those of you on patreon that have been uh, helping out in this period in which the youtube ad income isn't kicking anything back uh so as things get colder by the way we're getting ready for another cold spell another polar vortex uh, another major shift in the uh in the weather, I got the heater on most of the time. This is a period in which expenses are a little higher. So I appreciate those of you that do feel like chipping in when you are able. I'm Alex Sansory, signing off, hoping that you have a cosmic, life-changing 1111 breakthrough. I don't always say that. I really don't. You can look back at past 1111s and not see a video. Because I don't always believe that it's significant just because it's 11.11. <laughs> I mean, how do we know that's not just some activation code for the Greys or something? <laughs> or the Reptilians? I mean, I'm actually hearing some people say that. I agree. <laughs> Watch out, 11.11. But um, joking aside, um, this is the period in which we've been waiting for most of our lives. I don't mean to say it like this, you know, 1999 waiting for 2000. Or the 1980s New Agers waiting for the 1990s alien spacecraft to save them. We've been actually concerned about this time for some time. You know, it's like it's like the two hands to midnight. You know, it, 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 it's 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 getting inching closer and closer to this period in which the world powers have their agenda. 
for how they're going to reshape our world and come out with this new, new, new world order, dystopian hellhole. The question is, what is the agenda of the true creator of this world? What is the destiny of these souls, those of us that are souls inhabiting biological form on this world? I believe that we are here to present a number of ideas that can change the world for the better. Okay, But as we do that, there's going to be interference and there's going to be disinformation and there's going to be politics and there's going to be the issues of humanity that have been there for thousands of years. And so the ultimate evolution, although you can think however you would like, but it's not going to stop me from expressing my mind. We may be really here to evolve beyond this type of a world. We can try to save the world. We can try to wake people up. How do we prevent the consciousness of evil from manifesting over and over and over again if it's that type of a planet where a lot of souls that are being released on probation from hell, either upward or through some other means, out of a massive rock maybe, that's been frozen in time, maybe even appearing to be something in the rock, screaming, screaming for vengeance until that day in which it's released from the lower world penitentiary into the world of humanity. Do you think a lot of these humans that are running around with us right now in this, uh, this prison planet are ready to evolve and ascend to the higher plane? Then why do so many speak as if we're on the cusp, we're on the cusp. What we are, as I wrap things up here, on a regular basis are going through massive high energy times. We're always on the cusp of something big and new. Something's always taking place. There's always an event occurring. There's always something big happening. It's all in our perspective. It's important to realize ultimately that the battles of good and evil can be seen during these periods. That's why during these periods, there's subtle attempts. It may even come through people that you know that may be there to cord you back to the dark grid. There may be in people in this world that can show us a good time or build up our ego or pick us up for a ride, take us across town for some sort of adventure. Maybe there's a reason why there are some people that want to interject themselves into having a relationship with you or being involved with you. When in fact, maybe there's someone or something else. This includes an occupation because when we talk about relationships, it's about a deeper relationship with ourselves, a more honest one and with the universe, with the world around us. We're not just talking about romantic relationships. So in this universe in which we're in physical form, we are here to evolve. And in order to do that, we have to pass certain tasks and pass through certain gates. Now, how are we going to do that if we're allowing ourselves to be having these lower relationships in these astral planes and in these physical planes? and in these other realities on the internet, which can be likened to a lower astral plane. Let's just be frank. <laughs> and so this is a time to reflect on our entire life, right? Our understanding of spirituality, our understanding of, of what we're doing here in this world, our understanding of karma and whether we believe in it or not. So much of my platform has been based around this concept throughout each and every year. And now we're living in an era of time in which we may potentially see some of this. And that would include positive because this is not a concept to fear. Karma is not something to fear. Because if there is positive credit and there is positive karma, then it too has a destiny to find us. Happy 11-11. I'm Alex Hansery signing off.